Hi everyone, welcome back to JPWHUTV. It's nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well and having a great start to your weekend. This is the preview of West Ham's 13th home game of the 23-24 Premier League season where we welcome Brentford to the London Stadium for our fifth London derby so far this season. This Monday evening for an 8 o'clock kickoff live under the lights on Sky Sports. As always guys, this video is sponsored by the channel sponsor 3retro.com. Please click the link in the description below that will take you directly through to the West Ham section of their website where you can purchase some really nice retro gear, guys, as you can see from the icon that's up here. Along with track jackets, polo shirts, sweatshirts and t-shirts made by Admiral and Umbro, so go check those out. Any purchases you make through the link in the description below, the commission that the channel would normally be getting, as I always say, I'll be sending on to the charity Iron Supporting Food Banks. They're based in the Newham area and they're helping those in the Newham area and the Essex County and further afield for that matter, as they're currently supporting 39 separate food banks as of the time of this recording. So guys, go grab yourself a really nice retro shirt. You'll be saving yourself a few quid in comparison to the club shop and you'll be helping those less fortunate than you and I and those who have been really struggling over the last four to five years. So as always, guys, there's timestamps in the description below. Jump around as much as you want, but if you can, by all means, please do sit with us. We've got, we've got a relatively small amount to talk about because most of the detail was done in the away, um, away fixture preview. Um, but by all means, please do put your comments in the comment section below. We're 11 subscribers away from 2,500, so please do hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content and you want to know more. And if you do, by all means, please do hit your uh, notification bells as well. Right, let's crack on with it. As always, guys, let's start off by talking about the officials. The referee for this game is Simon Hooper, which is a bit of a good news, really, because even though we have issue with Simon Hooper, like we do with all um, referees to be honest with you he has been the referee of two of our home victories so far this season man united just just uh, just before christmas and arsenal in the league cup which is fantastic news from that uh, that's from that point of view i hope he can help us get three out of three victories out of that the assistants are adrian holmes and simon long the fourth official is tony harrington unfortunately on var we have michael oliver who i do have a lot of time for he is the better referee but it's on Sky Sports and it's Michael Oliver. And his assistant is, once again, Constantine Hatsidakis. So it's quite a mixed reaction, quite a mixed bunch of officials for this game. Now, as we know, guys, you know we're in a really bad slump in terms of performances since, not, not just since before the start of the year, to be honest with you. You know, we, we played okay when we beat Man United at home. Just, just before Christmas, or just after Christmas, whenever it was, it's a blur already. Um, but yeah, you know, it's about yeah. This is going to be a tricky one. We know Brentford. Now, normally we would talk about them the last six, but this is their third season in the Premier League so far, so it's not really relevant from that point of view. Brentford and uh, our home record against Brentford and David Moyes' record against Brentford at home in the Premier League are exactly the same because he's been the manager for both games. He has played them prior to the Premier League in infection. Um, <laughs> infection in um at what uh, inception is the word I'm thinking of um but that was like league that was football league time so it's not really relevant so but as you guys know Brentford are a bit of a bogey team our last two home games against Brentford we've lost both games um and likewise as I say Matt David Moyes was in charge for those so it's not really relevant to go much further into that than we already know now Brentford are 14th in the Premier League after 25 games they've won seven drawn four lost 14 scoring 35 goals and conceding 44 so on a minus nine goal difference and they're on 25 sorry they're on, they're on 25 points five points above the bottom three now their away record so far in the Premier League is a little bit of a mixed bag as well. They so far on the on the road, they've won three, drawn one, lost eight, scoring thirteen, conceding seventeen, so a minus four goal difference. And their last five away games shows that they've won once and lost four times. In in actual fact, if I remember correctly, the order goes loss, loss, win. So loss, 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 win, loss. So West Ham, they rock up to West Ham on a Monday night. What could possibly go wrong? Now, their highest goal scorer away from home is right winger Mubemo with four goals and one assist. He is out injured, which we'll talk about in a minute. But also Ajer, Roslav, Jensen, Mope, Regulian, and Janet and Wissa are all joint high assists with them as well, for that matter, on one assist each as well. Uh, Tony is the Ivan Tony. Of course, he, he returned to the footballing side at the, um, at the start of January. 
and already he is their highest away aerial duel winner with an average of 4.3 average um 4.3 per game that's just amazing you know he's been out he was out for out for like eight months and already he is the highest aerial duel winner and he's followed very closely by Pinnock, who's an average of 4.1 aerial duels one per game now as we know as I said earlier, you know, Brentford are our bogey team. They are absolutely lethal at set pieces from both free kicks, attacking and defending set pieces, but they don't seem to be able to be able to protect the lead all that much, hence them being down, down where they are in the table. But some good news from a West Ham perspective, of course, is in terms of injuries, centre-back De Silva and left-back Rico Henry are out with their respective knee injuries. There's no return date yet for De Silva and Henry um, had knee surgery a little while ago so it looks like he's going to be out until pretty much the end of the season uh right back sorry right back heck heckley i think it's just hickey actually isn't it? um is out until mid-may with a thigh injury center back pinnock and mubemo as i mentioned earlier are both out until the end of march from their respective ankle injuries and right winger Shade is out until the end of march with a groin or hip injury it's not very clear from from premierinjuries.com as the as the because it mentions about two or three it's a hip groin Something else, you know, it's just it's ridiculous information up there. But that's up-to-date information as of the time of this recording. So, yeah, as I say, you know, Brentford are a very tricky side. You know, they've they played pretty well against Man City at the weekend by only losing 1-0. I do think the reason why they won nil one they only lost by one goal was because they didn't have, they didn't have De Bruyne on the pitch. He was on he was on the bench the entire time. So there you go. Now let's um let's turn to West Ham now. If you haven't already done so, guys, and by the looks of the um, viewing figures, you haven't, click here to watch my reaction to the Europa League, sorry, Europa League last 16 draw. Now, David Moyes has come under a lot of flack over the last 24 hours or so in terms of his comments made in the in the pre-match press conference, um, which is understandable to a degree. It's very, very arrogant from him. Um, and in actual fact, let's talk about the stuff that happened after the Knott's Forest interview as well, uh, game as well, for that matter, where he said that uh, what was what was what was the quote again? It was something along the lines of, um, you know, it's not that winning is what I do, but he was basically saying, you know, may, maybe the fans want some that somebody's going to entertain them more. Yes, we do. Um, and you know, then obviously, and he got going along the lines of, you know, they want they want obviously want to win more as well. Yes, we do. Um, but the man was it the manager that is sitting here is one more, and that's both right and wrong at the same point. Okay, yes, he is our most successful manager since more Johnny Lyle, basically. Um, you know, let's not forget that Lyle got us relegated twice, way, be way, way before the Premier League started. Um, and yes, he's he's the only manager that won has won some silverware, barring the Intertoto Cup and the odd Championship final playoff um so yes he he's right in what he's saying but you do not under any circumstances you do not turn on the supporters he's done that quite a few times over the last few years it's i do generally think it's a defensive mechanism ironic from a defensive manager who's conceded 11 goals in three games but i do i do really think that the fact he's, he's going on the offensive the entire time start doing that on the pitch dave yeah, start doing that on the pitch. We want to see if you if you're going to come out and have a go at us for wanting to watch our team win every week. Yes, all right. It, we you know we're not we don't win. We know full well with the tactics that Moyes has. He's not going to win it stylishly under any circumstances. But at the same point, you don't turn on your fans. Now you know Allardyce turned on his fan, turned on us, and we know what happened there. He was told in the January before he was terminated, or what? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was terminated. The contract wasn't renewed. It was terminated. It was told in the uh, around about the Christmas before ha that that happened that he was no longer going to be in charge. It has feelings of that big time. Yes, he said yes. There is a contract on the table, um, but it's my decision to see what what we're going to do at the end of the season and if I can guarantee a few things. Yes, I do believe that's true, but I also think that the board want guarantees from him as well for that matter. Now, personally, as I say, the way the football is being played is very similar to the way that the, the end of Allardyce football was being played as well, for that matter. 
I hope to be proven wrong. I genuinely do. I think the only reason why um, David Moyes is going to get a new contract in the summer is down to the fact of us finishing in the European position again. Be it table or be it winning the Europa League. I would genuinely think that's the only way that the board are going to sign off on a new contract. I really genuinely do. If we finish in eighth position, depending on FA Cup stuff, possibly, and if that new coefficient of five places for Champions League, it could push six, seven, eighth down. We don't know yet. We're just waiting for, you know, but that's, that's a conversation that's been taking place a lot recently in the fan base. I haven't seen anything that has concreted that. If you have guys, by all means, please do let me know in that. And of course, I just want to make a quick caveat while we're on the European subject. I got the league wrong yesterday when I did the, um, when I did that. And thank you to whomever it was that made this comment. Um, I thought we played Freiburg in the conference league. It wasn't, it was actually in the Europa League prior to that. So two times we're going to be playing Freiburg. As I say, go check the preview out of the reaction to that other than that. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, I'm not happy about it in any shape or form. I understand where David Moyes is coming from, 100%. I just, and also likewise, I just, I just think it's more than that. If he just, you know, if he just said that the board and I are going to be sitting down at the end of the season to discuss it, I think that would have gone over a little bit better. And likewise, his comments in the um, Knott's Forest video, press, uh, pre, sorry, post-match conference as well, for that matter, where he said, well, what he, he said, it was relatively balanced. For David Moyes, it was relatively balanced. But I do think, you know, he, 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 sh if he, he's need, he needs to do what he did against Ar um, when we lost against Arsenal. Take a bit more of um, responsibility. Yeah? It's, 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 down, it's down to me that to, to entertain the fans to play better football than we're currently playing. If you'd have said that before or after he'd said, I'm the one, the one that's sitting here wins more, I think don't think as much I don't think as much would have been made of it as it currently has been but again that's just my that's my opinion on it now guys let's let's go back to the video it's the content itself now in terms of injuries as we know um, f um well absentees I should say Phillips is suspended for this game for the two yellows against Knott's Forest uh, the second low should never happen, but it did. No worst of it. Pakatar, according to prime, uh, so according to PremierInjuries.com, is a seventy-five percent chance of returning. Um, David Moyes has said there's a good chance he's going to get. There's a good chance he's going to get involved. We're going to have to wait and see. I do personally, as much as I, or everything in as a West Ham supporter inside me is screaming for Pakatar to play in this game. We've seen what we've seen him being rushed back once before. I'm not saying this time round is going to be rushed back again. For me, I want him on the bench. 100% I want him on the bench. To come on as a sub with 15, 20 minutes to go. Standard Moisey 65, 70 minute substitution mark. Just to get just to get a bit of a run out rather than anything. Or come on at half time. I don't think this is the right time to play him yet. Now we've got Brent, we've got Everton away. Saturday after this Monday night kickoff. So I think more. I, I've been saying for the last few weeks that um, I do. I do think that Pakatar is going to be back for this fixture, and I and I still maintain that. I still do, but I don't want him in the starting eleven. I don't. I don't. I want him to be prepped, ready to go, but not rush back. We know full well he's going to be rushed back, but I don't want that at all. I'd rather him be in the starting eleven for Everton because he's been training for a couple of weeks, Pakatar. So it's great from that point of view. But you can train as much as you want. You're not going to be match fit both physically and mentally without getting some minutes. And I would rather we have him on at half time or a late end, latter end substitution than being risked right from the start. Because he could, he could get injured again. He really could. He's back. Everybody knows he's back, including Brentford will know that. You know, if I can find that out, if you can find that out, the guys at Brentford know that. So he could be he could be marked out of the game just like Kudos was against Knott's Forest. You know, it's we need. You need to keep them guessing. But while we're talking about keeping them guessing, guys, as, as we're basically talking about the starting eleven now, you know, I thought about this a lot recently. There's a big, big um, argument for Ben Johnson to start at right back. Get it? You know, he's faster than Sue Fowl. He will get turned by Tony if he does. That's the problem. I'm not saying that Sue Fowl isn't going to be for that matter. But I do think we need to drop our conceding centre backs big time. I've, again. I've been saying it for the last couple of weeks now. I don't trust the Gwed. 
I love Zuma to bits, but he just can't, he's not mobile enough. Both goals against Forest, as we talked about during the live watch along with both goals, they were at fault for in one reason or another. We just can't have it. We've conceded the same centre back pairing, or basically the same back four. You know, barring obviously Sufaus being suspended for one of one of the last three games, but we've conceded eleven goals with that back four. Something needs to change. Something really needs to change. Likewise, obviously Phillips um, as well for that matter. Now I know you guys are going to berate me for my starting eleven, but this is what I'm going to. This is what I'm hoping we're going to see. I'm not saying David Moyes is going to do it. But I'm going to put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what your, your starting eleven is if you would do it. But I don't want to see anybody say, oh, he's not going to start him. I know that. I've just said this is he's not going to start him. But this is the starting eleven that I would put out if I was in charge of West Ham United. Ariola in goal with a back four of Soufal, Mavropanos, Casey and Emerson. Alvarez in the hole behind James Ward-Prowse with Antonio, Ings, Kudus in midfield with Bowen up front. Now I know you guys are going to be sitting there going, what the fuck have you put Danny Ings in there for? Well, I'll tell you for one. When he's playing in a number 10 role or out on the wing, I do genuinely think He's better at that than he is being as a, as the lone striker. I've put Antonio out on the right with Bowen up front because I think Antonio's strengths now is getting older. I think his strengths are better running down the right hand side. At the end of the day, guys, we know Antonio's going to be up front at one point. Bowen's going to be up at one front. Kudas could be up at one front, up front at one point. One point. Even if Pakatar's going to be on the bench at any point, he could be used as a centre forward, stroke false nine, whatever you want to look at it. So we have the rotation to do it. I just hope it's enough for us to get three points against Brentford and get us back in contention for a European position. Because, yes, the West Ham fan in me is saying a top 10 finish will be, will be brilliant. We say that every single season. I just think we need to try and cement ourselves in a European fight. A European fight. I want us to fight for it. I don't want us to finish like five or six points clear of the drop like we did last season we're not going to do that this season unless we lose every other game we're just not you know where are we, where are we? we've got 13 games left 12 13 games left some difficult op oppositions coming up but in the meantime guys i've waffled on for way too long it's about seven minutes longer than i planned but yeah i had to get my thoughts out on what's been going on over the last few days so guys thank you very very much for sticking this with me this long i love you all if you've made it this far as i say please do like share and subscribe take care and we'll have you'll see the um full-time thoughts on probably monday night stroke tuesday morning depending on what time i get back thank you thanks to the central line but in the meantime guys look after yourselves take care have a great weekend and i'll see you very soon all the best now